All right, welcome everyone to another Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. Today we are going to be putting paint on this glorious, slimy, gross old toad from the Brotherhood of Mutants. Uh, so Magneto's little lackey here going on. It's going to be great. We're going to have lots of fun. It's going to be cool. <clears throat> so with that, let's just dive right in. Once again, my face cam is not around because I have a new monitor. Don't have a new face cam yet. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to do something a little different with this toad. I was thinking about it, and rather than doing the normal kind of orange and purple, uh, this month, if you haven't been following us so far, the challenge for painting protocol, hashtag painting protocol on Instagram, is paint something spooky. Dallas did a great spooky Taskmaster, so we're going to try to make a spooky toad. We're going to make him look a little more sinister than the uh, normal toad going on, so we're going to pick some really fun colors. We're going to be working a lot with purple today, which is one of my favorite colors, and I think purple and black probably is the way to go, and then we'll do some green flesh tones to make him look more froggy, and uh, it should be pretty fun. So we're just going to change up kind of the tones and everything on the colors. We're going to make a really rich purple. If you've seen the amazing toad that was painted by Brendan, uh, you'll notice that it was way more of a like kind of a subdued lavender, but we're just gonna go entirely different on ours. So the first thing I'm gonna do just really quick, is I'm gonna use some Mojave White and I'm just gonna lay down some paint, some thin paint layer on the brick so that that will dry as we continue to paint our toad. And then we can jump back and do some fun stuff with the bricks and hopefully the, get this miniature knocked out primarily within an hour. But we'll see how it goes. I have, I have all the faiths, I think, in where we're gonna go with this. And I did do the Zenith Prime on this fellow, this fine and dapper fellow, uh, like we do every time. So I used an airbrush for that, simply sprayed with a coat of dark gray, uh, followed by a 45 degree angle spray of light gray. And this gives me some nice shadows and highlights that are naturally already occurring that I can play with with my washes. You don't know what I'm talking about by now. Anytime you check out one of our videos, you're pretty much gonna see us using this technique. Uh, it helps speed up the process a lot, allows us to use washes get really great results really quickly. Um, so overall, it's just a fantastic way to kind of approach this stuff. And again, I'm not looking for super thin, uh, like super opaque coverage with this Mojave White. I'm really just trying to get it into the cracks and crevices, lighten up the bricks a little bit. We'll go back and use some washes to kind of pick out those bricks and make them look really nice. Um, but because this is a thinner paint, I am gonna wanna give it some time to dry really good before I go back in with washes or otherwise we're gonna have a mess on our hands. So just trying to be cognizant of the process, where I need to be and what I need to give time to dry versus what I don't. This also gives me a little bit of time to kind of examine toad, figure out where I wanna put the colors so I can get this two point objective runner all painted up and ready for the tabletop. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So we have that stuff down, really good. Pull some of that away. All right, so there's our Mojave White. Go now to our Toad. <clears throat> so to start, I'm gonna use Sunset Purple, which is a really nice um, kind of pinkish purple. It's pretty rich. It's got a lot of nice color to it. And then I'm going to be highlighting up with uh, Fuchsia from Scale 75, which is kind of on the magenta scale. Um, this is going to give us a really rich, nice looking purple. And I think ideally what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to do a little wet blending as we go so that we can get some fun colors going on and really make this guy look cool. So question number one is, I think we want the collar to be purple like normal. So we'll just kind of start layering that on. You see I thinned out this purple into kind of a wash consistency. So I'm gonna let that play. Maybe we'll do purple and orange, who knows? I don't know. As long as it's spooky, it doesn't really matter, right? So. <clears throat> Maybe we'll wind up with a little bit more of a traditional looking toad, but we'll pop up the color saturations. Sky's the limit today. We can do whatever we want. As long as he looks spooky at the end. Get around that 
tongue. Big old long licky tongue. Gross. It's okay if I get a little bit on that. We'll come back and hit that later. We'll do the purple around the boots. No one's doing really good out there, having fun, enjoying their day, getting ready for Halloween. If you happen to be in the States or just a celebrator of such a spooky holiday, it's going to be a little different this year, I'm sure, but it's still always fun to buy a bunch of candy, watch really bad, cheesy horror movies, and you know, play dress up. See that Pagani is already in there answering questions or Josh or whoever's running the main account this time about playtesters. We got a lot of applicants. It was great. Thank you to everyone who kind of reached out. Um, looking forward to working with a new <clears throat> additions to the team and making everything better. More exciting and all that good jazz that's coming up. We got a lot of cool stuff on the horizon and obviously our testers are a huge part of how we're able to do what we do and get these characters to play well on the tabletop and to keep the game holistically as exciting and as fun and everything else as it can be so it's a lot of hard work we really appreciate everybody who chips in for it though and uh, they're great contractors for sure And it leads to days like today where we get to sit down as a studio and talk about all the good feedback and figure out what we want to do with it. The best part is when everybody disagrees on something from the playtesting groups and then we have to go, okay, well, who do we listen to? Who do we not? How do we split the difference? Finish out this purple. I think we're gonna do something a little different, maybe. Mm, yeah, sure. We'll give them the spooky underwear, why not? And by spooky underwear, I mean the purple underwear. In that classic superhero fashion, gotta wear your undies on the outside. He's obviously far from a hero, but still super. In his own way, in his own way. Let's not deny Toad his place. It's one of the most important mutants in the world. We'll go with that. I think we're pretty happy with where this purple is, so we'll give it a minute to dry. We'll dive into the next color on the suit. That's our purple all laid down and ready to go. It's looking pretty sharp. So, moving on to our next color, and you can see how that Zenith highlight really helped us out here by giving us some really natural and quick highlighting and shades. Add a little bit more to the top here. All right, so now we need to do the bodysuit. Which I think for this guy, we're just gonna go with a nice dark black. 
So I'm going to go in with Abyssal Blue, which is a really nice color in terms of kind of got a bluish tint to it. It'll play well with those purples. So we're just going to turn that into a quick wash as well, using a little bit of water, a little bit of medium. Blaze through this. Yeah, Josh posted up the storm card. That was really cool. We got Toad and Magneto spoiled last week. I think that leaves Cyclops. Who? Cyclops Beast. And Mystique left at this point. So we'll see what Josh decides to do with that stuff. And then by that point, X-Men will be at everyone's doorstep, ready to go. It's coming up so quick. Although this month does feel like it's lasted a long time as well. It's kind of been a weird one. So one of the reasons that I'm opting to do the black on the suit itself is that I want that purple to really pop, for one. We're just really going to dive into the purple. And then my plan here is to give our toad really, really green skin. So we're going to go kind of more frog-like with it which a couple of versions of Toad in the past have had a more unnatural skin tone. Um, I think one of the animated shows had him like as just literally a frog person for the most part. So he had like all the classic tropes of frog skin. But I think that'll just be kind of a fun thing to do. It'll give him that Halloween-y feel. And hopefully we can make him look really sinister and scary. to hit our spooktacular hashtag painting pro protocol challenge here. Maybe depending on how we feel. I just noticed I missed the back of that shoe. Not very impressive. Luckily our purple's still out, so we'll just take care of that right now. Maybe if we're feeling really crazy, we'll give that belt an orange color to it or something to let it really pop out. Kind of give us a tie back to a uh, classic toad a little bit. All right, so that's where we're at so far. We got stuff a minute to dry. Uh, okay, where do we want to go next? So I think what we'll do is we'll hit the bricks next that white looks like it's dried. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some crimson ink, which is somewhere in here, and some violet ink, some blue ink. Where'd my crimson go? There we go. So I'm going to grab some crimson, whoop, some chestnut, and we're going to make up kind of a nice red-brown kind of ink. And then we're going to go through and we're going to take some of our blue ink and we're going to kind of mix those together and we're going to form ourselves some fun little brick colors. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to hit each brick individually. And I'm going to try to avoid hitting the white in between them so that we maintain some of that white mortar. And if some of it spills in, which it inevitably will because we're working with pretty thin paints. Um, we can always go through and touch that stuff back up. I might add just a little bit of paint to this if it starts to be really problematic, but for the most part, that ink should just grip right in there. This is more of a tap and just letting that capillary action on of the ink kind of do the work for me. 
it's not really painting it in because um, it knows where it wants to run and then if it runs in places that I don't really want it I can go back through and fix it up later this will give us kind of that nice two-toning on the bricks that we want to see as we mix in some of that blue ink too and this is just a process of kind of additive it's almost like a wet blend with inks once you really start getting down to it right now we're just doing that red coming out blown out on the camera but as it dries it should start to tone down a little bit for you if I really wanted to like pick it up I could just do it over the whole course of the bricks and then go back through and do the white again if I wanted to which I might wind up just breaking down and doing at some point but not right now Sometimes your speedy techniques don't work out the way you want them to. Especially when you're on an hour time limit, Josh. All right, so while that ink is still wet, and go through. Yep, we're going to abandon that plan. We're just going to do that. You see kind of how our bricks have that red tone to them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through with my blue ink. And I'm just going to pick a couple of bricks, because if you ever look at natural brickwork, you always wind up with some bricks that are darker than others. And I'm going to add blue and red together. We're going to get kind of a purple tone. So, like, this will naturally darken up some of our bricks will give us kind of that like two tonality that we want I don't want this to be a lot of them just a couple of them and then come back through and mix a bit more red in so again like I said this is a bit like wet blending with inks on the mini itself so we want to maintain that red hue but just with that darker sense of blue. Adjust my exposure a little bit, that'll help out. It's really blown out today for whatever reason. So you can kind of see how that natural stone coloring is kind of coming in now for the brick as we wet blend that blue and that red over that Mojave white. We can kind of keep going with this for days, but we won't because we have more of a miniature to paint. So you kind of want to get it to a point to where pretty happy with what's there <clears throat> and then if we want to like tone this back up or make it a bit more red we can always go through with a glaze and get it more to a ruddy red brown you can leave it like it is and kind of leave it a bit more subdued and watercolory there's a lot of things that you can do in terms of getting this to a level that you're going to be happy with but just kind of play with those inks with those colors mix on the miniature and you can get some really fun kind of organic colors and looks to that brick. All right, so go back through and I don't think our suit's quite dry, but our purples look really dry. So 
Let's hit the skin next. And for that, we're gonna grab Sure, why not? So we're gonna grab some of the surf orc flesh, which is kind of like a, almost an aqua or a teal, um, but it's on the green side. We're just gonna start layering that on the skin. And we're gonna thin it out just a little bit. Not quite a wash, but enough that we're gonna get some good stretching over that Zenith Prime. I'm just gonna come in and we're gonna hit it up. We're gonna make a very monstrous Halloween toad. Hopefully, somebody that you take a little bit more seriously if you caught him in a back alley. Although, the dude came at you in a back alley with a four foot tongue, I feel like you'd probably take him seriously anyway. I would not mess with this dude. I don't want to get licked. So see on that arm, I got a little messy with my black wash and it did wind up getting there. So I can either let that play and just kind of have like a little discoloration spot like skin would sometimes have, or I can just continue to use layers and kind of cover it back up. Goal here is definitely to be a little careful to not get this surf or green on the purples. But this is its tabletop. So we're not trying to enter this guy into a competition. We're going to snap a cool picture of him, put him on the Instagram for the painting challenge. Just show off kind of our take on Spooky. Liking it so far. I think it's coming through pretty well. So we got that. There's kind of our first layer of skin down. So while that dries because we're working with washes, and we only work on one mini at a time. We gotta think of a hair color. What hair color should he have? Uh, we can work on the tongue too, I suppose. I kinda wanna do the hair. Maybe we'll go with like a brown for the hair. Brown seems good. Let's find a good brown. Ooh, yeah, maybe this one. So we're gonna use red leather and try to get like an auburn kind of hair color going on. Again, we're just going to stretch this out a little bit of water. If we don't like how this turns out, we can always fix it later. I don't want to do like straight black because I felt like it was going to blend too much in with the suit. So I wanted something that was a little bit different. So hopefully the red in this will kind of pair well with our purples. Kind of a nice color tetrarch going on. We don't want it to be comical. We're not looking to make a clown. Not a clown toad. No, no. A real toad. So there we go. So you can see how the Zenith Prime really helps on just doing that hair with the texture because it immediately just washes into those crevices, leaves the top light, leaves the bottoms dark. We can accentuate that with another dark wash if we want to. We've got our hair going on. So let's dive into the tongue. So for the tongue, we're going to go back to our fuchsia. I think we want this tongue to be really zippy. So we're going to grab our fuchsia. We're going to stretch that out with a little bit of water. Come in. And this will look real crazy until we tone it back down, but that's okay, because crazy is what we're looking for right now. It's almost like cyberpunk toad going on here right now. Get under there.
sure we get that going on. Come back through and get that spittle. There's our first layer done for the tongue. And now, I think just because, yeah, we got lots of time. We're doing so well on this guy. I'm gonna grab, not that one. I'm gonna grab some Ishtar pink, which is kind of more of a fleshy color. And I'm gonna start wet blending this onto the tongue just to tone back a little bit of that fuchsia. And we're just gonna play around with some colors and while the rest of our paint's dry, we come in. And we're just gonna mix and blend on the mini. So wet blending is a really fun enjoyable technique because you kind of just mash paint on the miniature and use it as your mixing palette and so you can mess around with your colors and it makes really smooth transitions <laughs> it's usually ideal to have two brushes when you're doing it one brush for each color so you can keep your stuff nice and Differentiated, make sure your colors stay loose, so keep them kind of damp. You don't want to take paint right out of the pot to do this. You just work pretty fast, back and forth, back and forth, until you wind up getting to a place that you're pretty happy with. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to hit the edges of the tongue with a bit more of that pink. We're going to let that fuchsia live more in the middle. Where the light would really hit it, we want a lot more of that Ishtar pink. It's kind of on the tips. while you mess up, grab paint with the wrong brush, and then just go and clean it up. So, wet blending is fun because it's a technique that you can kind of just lose yourself in and continue to do like non-stop, but we don't let that happen. We got, we got more work to do. As much fun as it can be, just sit here and wet blend away. bit more pink and I think we'll call this a successfully blended tongue. Ooh, we should get up here too. I'm really looking at that angle. But we should be. So there's our tongue. Pretty happy with that. A little fun minute of wet blending to get to that point. Go back and finish those bricks on the other side at some point, but not today. Kind of count that as part of our base. Or if we have lots of time, we'll go back and do it. Who knows? Okay. So that's where we're at right now. I want to go back and we're going to do a quick blue wash over the skin or over the suit just to kind of give it some extra tone and dimension. So I'm going to take my blue and a little bit of black ink 
and mix that together. This is effectively the same mix that I was using on the bricks. And we're just going to hit this whole thing. This will help deepen the color a little bit. It will also add some dimension to it because it's going to give that blue a little bit more pop. So one of the things is with that Zenith highlight is that colors can kind of get washed out because they're going over that lighter gray or that white. And so sometimes you just want to add that extra bit of color and using a wash or a glaze will really help you do that. In addition to kind of adding extra depth and stuff volume all those good painterly words there we go and then we'll just go back through and we'll do some additional highlighting on that to pop it out I'm gonna grab some violet ink and we're just going to do a quick glaze over the purples just to make them really pop So, ink tense violet. I want to be careful with this, it's pretty dark. So we are gonna thin it out pretty good. Because we really want it to be kind of like a punchy purple. We could also use our fluorescence for this. From the scale range, they have some pretty nice fluorescence. Those could really help a lot if you wanted to really punch up the colors. But again, we're just trying to like we're using these washes effectively to smooth the transitions between our first wash over the zenith, kind of the natural shading and highlighting we got out of using that technique. And again, this is all about, you can see the stark difference between where we started with the bricks and where we ended with the bricks. So that's kind of a fun back and forth comparison because I didn't actually finish the back of the bricks because that's not where the action really happens. But all this is just kind of tricks to like get really quick, good looking tabletop results. So we can once again continue on our streak of painting X, X-Men's and Brotherhood Mutants and all that other stuff within an hour. We did our Beast last week, so we can do Beast versus Toad. See how happy we are with that stuff. Excited we are. But you don't have to spend hours and hours getting everything perfect. Unless that's what you want to do. And there's a lot of times where I sit down to paint and I'll spend two, three, four hours on a character. Um, because I'm just zoning out and I'm, I'm enjoying the process and that's one of the wonderful things about the hobby. But if you're really looking to like bang out some really nice looking miniatures so you can go play a game with your friends over the weekend, you know, there are ways to do that too. And that's kind of what we've been showing all this month with the X-Men as ways to get really nice looking miniatures and results um, in short amount of time. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to that Ishtar pink and I'm going to use that with my Surfer Orc Flesh, and I'm going to mix up kind of a highlight for the skin. So I really like where we are with that right now, so I don't really want to deepen it up, but I do want to add some highlights. And the pink will work really well with that green, because again, it's kind of more of a, a teal or an aqua. And pink really loves teal, so... This is just going to turn out and give us a nice kind of natural shading and transition. We can just kind of go back in. We're just going to hit like the nose and get around the lips. Try not to hit that tongue now, so we do want to be a little careful. And get those really high cheeks. And then we can come into the arms and just do a little bit of highlighting there where the light would hit over the top this doesn't have to be like super aggressive but it's going to give us some nice volume and separation come back and hit this part of the arm get the elbow any place where that would be lighter 
can go back in, mix in some more pink, and loosen that up a little bit because it's getting pretty chunky. And maybe at this point we'll get a little bold, we'll add some white in there just to maintain some of the desaturated color that helps him make, make him look kind of like evil and mean. Things without color, you know. You often associate like bad guys with, with no color. It's a classic thing. The less vibrant you are, the more desaturated you are, the kind of the more evil in a lot of like art and stuff like that. So, Or you get those nice, really poppy, nature danger colors, you know. You can go either way. Desaturated, kind of deathly tones, you know, people, dead things lose their color. They go gray or green, a muted color. These are all kind of tricks that the brain kind of just reads into and plays with. So you can do all that. There's our mean looking toad. I am going to add just a little bit of white sands, which is a nice off white this mix just to get like a really sharp highlight for like the bridge of the nose and the cheeks and stuff um, because the more pink I add kind of the muddier that color is going to get there's a certain point where obviously it just becomes more like the flesh tone than the nice or surfer orc teal that we have going on so even though you normally don't want to start with white there's definitely a point to where white becomes like a thing so now we'll just accentuate all these really great facial features, kind of the lips, the cheeks, that going on. Come down here and just do a little bit of streaking, feathering, I guess, sort of. Or we want those little spots to be, just to really make things kind of pop. Give that color some nice separation. Cheek. There. It's kind of our sinister looking toad that's going on. So he looks pretty spooky. He looks he looks pretty ready for Halloween. Um, honestly, this part you could be done. You could just say, "All right, this looks amazing. I'm I'm happy. I'm gonna just take the hair one more level." So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of black ink. For my ink text black i'm going to thin it out quite a bit and i'm just going to deepen up the hair just to kind of give it a little more definition so this will just kind of run into those cracks and crevices the goal here is to really not have it tonally shift the red on top so i've made it very very thin and this is one of the great things about inks is that you can get away with doing this I have a cat hair, sweet. Anyone who lives with pets, you know the challenge. Somehow the cat hair gets everywhere. Well, this will just help add that extra definition to the hair. And again, the darker kind of like tones and deeper cracks and crevices will just make them look a little extra evil. And then I think we need to do some like really grody fluorescent green spittle on the tongue. We can give them those evil glowing yellow eyes. Yellow eyes always a classic like evil thing. I don't know why. I think yellow eyes become the marker of like sinister, but they totally did. All right, so now you can see how we amped up the kind of the contrast on that hair. I'm just gonna pull some of that black ink because I don't want it to pool. I want that to be pretty smooth. So there's that, we're looking really good. I'm gonna grab that abyssal blue, I'm gonna add a little bit of arctic blue, and I'm gonna create a quick highlight. I'm not gonna do, oh, that was way more arctic blue than I wanted, that's okay. Um, I'm not gonna do like anything super major, I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna add, if you watched the Beast episode last week, we kinda did these little scritch highlights, so I'm just gonna add a little texture to those pants into that suit just to give it a little bit of like life and pop 
So it's it's literally just coming in and it's doing like little little suit lines where that fabric would kind of like stretch. And it's just gonna add that little extra bit of volume in life. And it's amazing how just these little lines can like really amp up a look. And if you screw up, you didn't actually screw up because you have your secondary brush. You just go in and just blend that scritch away. And we did a ton of this on Beast last week. So if you want to watch like 20 minutes of me just making scritches and saying the word scritches over and over, because that's the quarantine life for you, um, that's, you can go do that. Go check it out on Twitch or on the YouTube channel. was right there so again we're just kind of going through and we're just adding a little bit and where there's actual folds in the cloth so like on these sleeves here that have been pushed up instead of making my own lines I can just kind of follow those extreme folds and pop those out because remember we talked about this a lot white is defined by its shadow and black is defined by its highlight so you do really want to make sure that when you do dark black colors that you have kind of like a really poppy highlight idea. You could do this with purple, you could do it with blue like I did. You can do greens, you can do all kinds of things, but kind of getting that little pop of highlight on there is going to help really sell the richness of that black. So you can see how that like really just kind of brings the overall tone of life. And if it gets a little too much, you can always go back and shade it out. But as it dries and kind of mutes in, you can also do a glaze over it to kind of blend everything back together. So you go really, really poppy with it, uh, which is a great way to kind of address it. Again, we're just kind of like in these colors there we go we still got to do his belt let's just be crazy I don't even know if I'm gonna like this but we're gonna grab our Sahara Sahara yellow which as we talked about with a lot of yellows it's a really great base for yellow we're gonna turn this a bit more orangey I think though rather than yellow but it's a good base for that too We'll just come in and give them a yellow belt because, you know, color coordination is not Toad's strong, strong suit. Let's say that. Let's say that. Oh, and I just went totally off camera. Apologies, apologies. center. We'll worry about that belt buckle later. Get rid of this little excess that I did because I totally went outside my lines. But that's okay. Because I can just kind of erase it away. Same at the top. So now we've got the belt done. Let's use the Sahara yellow and get some little eyeballs for them. And then let's make some gross looking spit. All right. So. Mm 
doing kind of eyes or anything like that. Uh, it would be really useful to just balance, brace your arm and your fingers. I'm using the arms of my chair. I know I can't get in there perfectly. So, just keep my other brush handy. I kind of just erase any of my mistake around the eye. I come in, and this guy's really squinty, so, you know. Those are going to show up, but he's got his little dots in there now. He's got a little yellow glow. It's very angry. It's very spooky. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab some pure white. Because we're going to be working with some fluorescence. I'm going to figure out where that spittle is. Right here at the end of the tongue. Come in and we're going to hit it with the pure white. Could just use it like that if we wanted to just look kind of like spit. I'm just going to blend it up just a little bit onto the tongue just to kind of give it the appearance that it's there. Let that dry for a second. Maybe while that dries, we'll do one more coat of our yellow belt. This is definitely a color that needs at least two coats. Come back through. See how big of a difference a second coat can make. A little bit too far down there. Little brush and blend that out. One of the great things is like as you go back through, you can dark line everything, give it a bit more separation, and fix some of those spillovers. And let's just really quick grab this oxide wash loose ink, which is a nice kind of orange. I'll give that belt a quick orange orange wash. Just kind of like deepen it up. Make it a bit more Halloween-y, you know? That orange going on. All the Stark armor variants. I mean, that's a lot of needs there, Rambo. That's a lot of needs. All right, so. We're gonna grab the fluorescent green, which is very green, as you can see, and doesn't cover Super opaque because it's so fluorescent, which is why we had to do a base cut of pure white. I'm just going to go in and really quickly hit that spit. I want to just let that remember how we blended that white up. We're going to blend that fluorescent green. really our goal here. Now if we were trying to make it look like glowy green spit, we'd want that fluorescent green to stay in the cracks and the crevices. I kind of just want it to be like glowy green spit, so um, we're not going to worry as much about that. But we will go back through and we'll hit it with some yellow. So we'll go to our fluorescent yellow, which is very, very yellow. Shocker, fluorescence, super bright. We'll do a little more wet blending just on that spit glob. And we're just gonna like wet blend here and there. So I'm really just looking at, again, at those like places where the light would really hit it. And I'm just kinda like, Blending those two together. 
because yellow and green are best friends when it comes to like making really cool glow. We lost too much of our tongue, which I think we might have. Just come in and blend it back out. So that you can kind of see that tongue underneath. So there we go. If you wanted to get really crazy, you had a lot of time, kind of come in and get some white right here, some white right here. Those dots are white down. Grab your green. It's still out because we have a lot out. You get a little more slobber on that tongue. You make it look kind of green and wet. a little bit. Then you can add that extra like green slime juice going on. Just to make it look really slobbery. You said so we're gonna make it spooky. I suppose if you're Horrified by getting licked by a gross toad tongue, you probably succeeded. So, yeah, so really, I'm just coming back through and I'm taking that fluorescent green, and I'm just dabbing it kind of on the edges, just letting it play across the tongue. Trying to make it look just ununiform and splotchy. So there you can kind of get a look at what we've accomplished. Seven minutes to go. And there we go. Oop. Take that away. And there is a mostly completed toad. We just have to finish the bricks on the back. When we go through and dark line we can do that right now really quick and just get that belt looking really nice. So, just kind of go through and grab a little bit of black on this guy, thin it down nice. This is just a flat black that we're going to make kind of runny. So it'll flow nice for us, kind of almost like an ink. And we just go through and do a really quick dark line around the belt, especially because we have all this, all these colors. Oop, that hand caught me. And there's three different colors. We got the black suit, and then the belt, and then the underwear. So dark lining, like we talked about with Beast. Is really you can just do base coats like really solid smooth base coats use a dark line to separate all of your areas and you're gonna have a really great looking miniature that doesn't require any highlighting or shading to look really sharp and poppy 
So it's definitely worth the small extra investment in time to give the eye that visual distinction that it needs. In order to separate out those different areas, it's going to add to your volumes and your shapes and all of that stuff. So, well worth it. And because these are comic book characters, you kind of have leeway to be pretty thick with it. So as you practice and learn it, you can be um, less less tight, and it's still going to look right. It's going to look like they were they were penciled and then inked and then painted, just like a comic book. So that's also pretty nice too. bit of extra lining to where his sleeves are to help separate those out kind of reclaim where that distinction is and again if we go too far you just kind of push the paint back up pull it to where you kind of want it Darken up his mouth a little bit. You can see where that tongue's coming out. All right. And with that, three minutes to spare. We'll call this toad completed as far as tail top quality standard goes, and maybe even a little bit more. Really happy with where he turned out. I think that he'll be a fine addition to hashtag painting protocols spooky challenge you still have a few days left if you have something spooky or inspired to get something on the instagram uh, it can be any any character from mcp you want and if you think it's spooky if it's in a spooky color stone if it's just ready for halloween throw it up there we'd love to see it we'd love to take a look at it um i hope you guys and gals and peoples out there all had a lot of fun Hanging out, chilling. Uh, I know I didn't answer a lot of questions in the chat, but I see that most of my AMG peeps are in there uh, doing all kinds of stuff, so seems great. Be sure to check out this Thursday, 1 p.m. Pacific, where Dallas will be painting up another mutant character. I don't know if we actually determined which one it was when we were talking today uh, earlier before the stream, but I'm sure you won't want to miss it. Again, here's our sinister-looking toad, all ready to spook the heck out of some crazy X-Mans and X peoples uh, otherwise folks stay safe be happy uh, continue to check us out online social media Instagram Facebook Twitter for all the latest and greatest information we've got a lot of really cool spoilers left to go before X-Men launch next month in November and be sure to join Jalis and the rest of the crew as we do streaming on Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific until then all take care have fun and we will see you on the next one goodbye <laughs>